Hello and welcome to another Spruce and Brews video. Today we're going to have a look at the new Beast Snagger Orcs army set from Games Workshop. So this is going to be more of a, uh, a first impression of the codex and a look at all the awesome new miniatures inside. Once we've spent a bit more time with the codex itself, we'll do a full deep dive and review. But yeah, I love Orcs in 40k. I've got a big um, kind of Speed Freaks force and I was really excited when we saw the, uh, the new Beast Snagger stuff coming out. And yeah, this... Potentially might be available in a couple of Games Workshop stores, but it disappeared off the uh, the web store super quickly. Uh, a bit of a precursor to a full Orc release coming later in the year. They've done this a couple of times now, and I really like these sets. We had the Sisters of Battle one, we've had the Lumineth one. Essentially, you get the Codex a couple of months early, along with some new miniatures. Which is a really cool idea, and a bit of a callback to some of the army boxes they used to do back in the day. So yeah, I was uh, looking to manage to snag one of these off the web store and uh, this arrived yesterday. And yeah, we thought we'd go through and have a look at the contents and uh, see the new miniatures and have a quick flick through the new book as well. Like I say, on the website we'll probably have some pictures of all the sprues and the assembled miniatures and everything once they're done. So yeah, but as you can see, you get some goodies in here. We get 20 of the new Beast Snagger boys. These are the kind of bigger Meteor Orcs that fit the kind of snake bites theme. We get Zodgrog Wart Snagger, who is kind of like a, a super runt herder. He, uh, he he can make one squad of your Gretchen in your army shoot better, which is really cool. Uh, and you also get a squad of um, Squig Hog Boys with a knob on Smasher Squig to go with them as well. So yeah, they look really, really fun. Obviously this is all very uh, Beast Snagger themed, as you'd expect, which is kind of like a new sub-faction of orcs included in here. Uh, they've painted up as snake bites, but you could put them in any any of the clans. Arguably, they probably work better as snake bites, but yeah. Uh, let's have a look inside and see what we get. First of all, I have to call out that this artwork on the box is really pretty. We've got the great white squig fighting some death core of Krieg, who uh, obviously we know are coming in the kill team box. So I really hope that the, uh, the death core line gets expanded when the uh, Astra Militarum book comes out. I'd love to see some plastic Death Riders, maybe some plastic Siege Artillery, uh, definitely Command Squad to go with these guys. So this gives me high hopes that we're going to see something like that. So as you can see, once we've uh, cracked the box open, it is fairly jam-packed inside. You get a load of miniatures, you get some cards, and you get the, the codex in the bottom of it. So let's have a look at the, the cards first. This is... Essentially the data cards that no doubt will come out when this is released separately with uh, exclusive Beast Snagger artwork on the front of it. These, if you've not used them before, basically it gives you all your psychic powers and your stratagems. You can use them as easy, easy rules references. Especially with the stratagems, it's sometimes a pain having to flick through the uh, the codex to find the important ones. This way you can have them to one side and uh, yeah, have them ready to go for your battles. I find these really useful and it's nice that they're included within the box with the artwork that matches the box too. But the main appeal for a lot of people getting this box are the new miniatures and we get a load in here. So let's take a look at the squig hogs first. So originally I thought that the the knob on Smasher Squig would be a a separate kit like a character sprue but it looks like it's actually part of the squig hog uh, boys set so when this comes out i imagine uh, it'll be a box of four miniatures with him included rules wise uh, for every squad of six that you take you can take up to two of the uh, the knobs without taking up detachment slots very much making it possible for you to uh obviously to pick up a, a six of these guys and not have the uh, the second knob go to waste. But these are so cool models. You know, you've got a squig with a wheel on the back, all sorts of wacky stuff in here. Uh, they're some of the most uh, fun, I'd say, models that they've done for the orcs. I, you know, rules-wise, law-wise, they're kind of reimagined um, kind of boar boys that we used to have back in the day, but obviously squigs were a lot more fun. Yeah, they're really ace models. And then the third part of the frame for them. I love that they've gone all in on the uh, the squig vibe. 
I'd have kind of liked to have seen a big, you know, plastic squig off or something. But I guess it exists in Forge World and I guess they've gone down the route of inventing new stuff. You know, we've got the, the kill rig on the way with the main wave, which I guess is a, uh, a massive squig pulling a kind of tank behind it. So, yeah, really, really like these. I'm really looking forward to getting these painted. I don't know whether to go like classic red squig colours or give them something different. But yeah, they're, they're really cool. Next in the set, we get the uh, the character as well. And he he's really cool as well. I do worry that his hair might get in the way of painting him. So when I build him, what I might do is assemble a head part and leave that as a sub-assembly. Just because I think it might be uh, tricky to get into the detail with that there. But yeah, this is really, really cool. Um, I think we said back on the podcast a while ago, if you bought multiples of these boxes, uh, you're probably better off waiting for the plastic frames. And now obviously you're getting them a lot earlier. If you did get multiple ones, you could probably use the, him as conversion fodder as well. You know, maybe make him medic or something out of it. But yeah, he's really, really cool. And then the last kit that we get in the box are the uh, the Beast Snagger boys themselves. So you get two two identical frames here. So you can make a squad of 20, or you can just make uh, two squads of 10, giving you lots of options on how to put them together. Uh, obviously at this time we don't know how they're going to come boxed when they're a uh, separate kit, whether it is a set of 10 or a set of 20. Um, I mean, it's quite hard to kind of work out the, the value of this box. I mean, even if this was, I don't know, 30 quid for the box of uh, Beastnagger Orcs, 30 for the squigs, what's that, 60, plus 25 for the characters. You're getting the data cards here and a limited edition book, which they'd normally price at about £50. So, yeah, it's a good value for the box. What you're going to want to do is uh, obviously work out what needs to be in your force. Now, a lot of people, I think, will be taking multiple units of those squigs or big units of those squigs because they're really, really fun. Uh, I see a lot of people probably going to go down the be snagger route and snake bites and have a lot of these... Uh, these beast snaggers in here so yeah if you want to be able to build up the army earlier and you can still get hold of a couple of these boxes then yeah certainly a good way of doing it but yeah they're really nice kits so in the book we've also got the paper stuff we'll go through the uh, the assembly instructions in a second but I just want to call out this really cool artwork that separates the uh, the book from the frames showing the uh, death core Krieg fighting the orcs and there are Death Riders in there. You know, it's not unknown for them to use, I guess, uh, non-plastic stuff in the artwork. I do wonder if we're going to get plastic uh, Death Riders, though. That would be really, really cool. But yeah, I like these little bits of artwork. It's just to protect the uh, the book from plastic materials, but they're quite nice. So moving on to the assembly instructions. Let's have a look what we've got in here. So again, as with all Games Workshop instructions recently, really clear to uh, to follow. You know, I have no issues building these. There's quite a few multiple parts on some of these. So obviously if you build your Beast Snagger Boys as a squad of 20, you can swap out the knob for just a boy. There is a single weapon option as well. Uh, for the, uh, I forget what it's called, the ranged gun. Arguably, these guys are probably better with uh, being armed for close combat anyway. But yeah, you might have a couple of parts left over to uh, to kit bash with. I'm looking at the sprues, they're not many pieces, these guys. So they're not going to be too fiddly to put together. If you if you have a quick look back at the sprue, a lot of the uh, the legs and the arms are kind of moulded in one piece. It's not like some of those old orc boys where you had the legs separate, then the body, and then you just put the arms to it. And because of that, they're a lot more dynamic because they're already in those poses, which is uh, which is pretty cool. Then we get on to the, uh, the Squig Hog Boys, and I mentioned earlier that if you take a squad of six of them, it unlocks two knobs on uh, Smasher Squigs that you can take without taking up a slot. Uh, and they seem to have thought that through because the, there's two like distinct builds of it that you can do. So, um, you know, there's one with the head down with a different uh, plate on it, one with just studs on it. The knob on top's got a choice of two heads. You can also give him a pistol or his close combat weapon in his hand. So if you do go down the route of having the squad of six and you end up with the two knobs spare, 
uh, you, you can arm them both with different weapons to make them look different on the table. So yeah, really, really like that. There's not much customization options in the Squig Hog Boys themselves. So if you do go for that squad of six, you are gonna have some duplication in there. You can always mix that up by having different colored squigs in the unit or repossession some of the heads and arms. I'm sure it won't be too hard to do that. But yeah, these are really, really fun and I can't wait to get some paint on them. Uh, shout out to the little bomb squig as well, which is possibly the best model in the universe. And then the final thing in the box is the new Codex Orcs. You get like a limited edition version in this box with a nice kind of beast snagger cover art on it. Like I say, this isn't going to be a full kind of review of this because I need to digest it and have a look. It more of a flip through and I'll call out some of my first impressions from a couple of hours with the book. I've got to say, it is really, really pretty though. Such a nice, such a nice book. We've said that on all of the uh, the recent GW releases. They really have gone to town with the artwork and the uh, the design of them. A lot of lore in here, as you would expect. Uh, yeah, quite a lot on the beast snaggers and the snake bites, kind of expanding that out with all the the new stuff that we're seeing in the book, which is cool. Along with some absolutely gorgeous artwork. So yeah, what I want to call out though, going into the rules, buh, 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 we have got kind of expanded uh, clans. So now everything in a detachment has to be the same clan. And there's some arguments in this one for taking multiple detachments with different clans being a pretty good thing to do in the book. They all seem pretty good. You know, there's some fun stuff you can do with them. Obviously, snake bites are really, really good. If you want to go vehicle heavy, you stick with the evil sons. If you want to go boy heavy, go with the goths. So, nothing too unusual, but they do get some pretty good improvements with all that. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited to try out some different builds. Something new they've added is specialist mobs. So, this lets you get around the, uh, the restrictions for some clans by having some kind of, like, specialist units who don't count for like their clan allegiance. So you could, for example, have a squad of um, death copters who um, improve the armor penetration by one whenever they shoot their, uh, their rockets. Really, really cool. You've got the truck boys who can disembark after a vehicle moves, letting them get into the fight quickly. So some fun stuff in there that you can do. You can take one of these per detachment and you probably are going to want to take one. Um, obviously that's going to depend on your clan and your composition of your force, but there's some fun stuff you can do there. Another thing that's added here is custom jobs. So your vehicles can get upgraded. They could do in the previous book, but we've got a few more options here. Points cost to do that. And then you can also have some bionics fitted on your characters as well, where you can get some cool stuff there. There's a lot of the new kits have got bionic parts on them as well, so that's a nice way of representing those upgrades. Again, we'll go into all this in more detail in our full review when it comes out. Just wanted to call out a few of the fun bits. Load of stratagems. There's not any really um, clan-specific ones. All the clan stuff is contained kind of within their own section with a single... Uh, stratagem for each clan, uh, making this a lot cleaner as in every clan can use all the stuff in this section, just uh, splits out a little bit. Obviously with the data cards in the set as well that makes it easier to manage those stratagems. Some really really good warlord traits, I think people are going to be um, really building some awesome combat characters. I've got a feeling that orc characters are going to be brutal and you might want to go multiple detachments just to fit in as many of those cool characters as you can. So yeah, very, very good. We get a revised wire discipline and a new beast herd discipline as well. So some new abilities for your uh, your psychers, of which the, uh, the beast naggers have act ridiculous access to psychers that we'll see in a little bit. So, uh, Relics chapter proved we've not looked into those too much. Crusade we've had a look at. This looks really fun. Uh, basically there's a mechanic where the character with the most experience in your army could potentially challenge your warlord to a duel. They'll have a bit of a pit fight after a battle and if they win they take command of the tribe and the loser gets a, uh, 
gets an injury. So I really like that. It shows the uh, the various characters within your crusade fighting over control of the uh, the tribe, which is really cool. Uh, we then get a mechanic where you can acquire scrap over the course of your crusade, and you can use that to give the vehicle upgrades and bionics upgrades that we saw earlier. Again, uh, yeah, kind of a bit of a call out to Gorka Morka. I'd have loved there to be kind of a mishap thing on here where, I don't know, your guy goes in for a bionic arm and ends up losing his legs and getting it replaced with a wheel. That would have been really cool. There's a bit of a Gorka Morka throwback. Sadly, there's not, but you know, that's the good thing about Crusade. There's nothing to stop you from inventing your own wacky stuff to, uh, to, to put on there. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to looking at the Orcs in the Crusade. Rules-wise, they're pretty cool. DAC has changed quite a bit. Um, rather than it being a chance to trigger extra hits on sixes, the weapon's got a split profile, where essentially if you're within half range, you get more shots. So that's pretty fun. Uh, here we go, reroll charge rolls. Ramshackles changed quite a bit now. It used to be like a funky ward save. Uh, now, if a weapon is less than strength eight, you reduce the damage characteristic by one to a minimum of one making it pretty tough to take out Orc vehicles. Um, and a lot of the buggies and stuff from the last wave of releases have now got that ramshackle rule too. So, you know, damage two weapons essentially are kind of wasted a little bit on vehicles. So it makes them a little bit more survivable, which is really, really cool. Uh, mob rules changed a little bit. They never counted as half strength if they're within six inches of another mob that's not half strength again making them survive those uh those tests a little bit easier and then the beast snaggers have got a six plus invulnerable save and they add one to hit if they're targeting vehicles or monsters so yeah pretty cool the uh the corner wire has also changed so it lasts over two turns now and it's split between your kind of foot based warlord and your vehicle based warlord one of them is more choppy one of them is a bit more shooty so yeah, they're pretty fun. Onto the uh, the profiles, there's lots and lots of changes here. We'll cover this when we get to the main review. I just wanted to call out some of the really, really cool stuff that we've seen in the new book. So one of my favorite profiles is the Beast Boss on Squigasaur. He is absolutely bananas good. Toughness seven, nine wounds. You can tool him out with some of those uh, upgrades that we saw earlier. The Squigasaur himself is strength 7, AP minus 3, 3 damage, can make 3 attacks with that. He's really good too, plus you can give him all those Warlord traits and uh, relics and stuff. Yeah, I think we're going to see a lot of beast bosses on there. There's also a named version, Mozrog Scragbad, who is a snakebite one. Uh, he's got a slightly better profile, um, at least you've got the option if you want the snakebite one or you want the generic one. In the snake bite army, you might just take both. Why not? You can take a Whirlboy, who is a new Beast Snagger Psyker. Arguably, I don't think we're going to see any of them, because later on in the book, we're going to see something much, much better. Gretchen are a little bit tougher. They're toughness three. They don't have the rule where they... I think they used to have plus one to hit if they were over a certain number of models. That's now baked into uh, the special character's rule. He can make a unit plus one. Uh, they are core, so they can get affected by a lot of auras and stuff as well. Orc boys are toughness 5 now, making them really, really resilient, which is really ace. Beast snagger boys are really good as well. Uh, interestingly, they've only got one wound each. A lot of people thought they might be kind of primaris orcs with two wounds. Nope, they're not. I think a lot of the orc stuff, they've represented that by making them harder to kill in toughness rather than increasing their wounds characteristic, which is a nice distinction between a lot of the other things that we've seen in the game at the minute as well. So yeah, I quite like them. Now, where we see some really, really cool stuff is in the uh, the heavy support. So we'll skip ahead. There's some cool stuff in here like the Squig Hog Boys, but if we go to the big new kit, the, if I can find it, the Kill Rig, is potentially one of the best units in the game. Not only is it a massive tank, toughness 8, 16 wounds, it is also festooned with weapons that are really, really strong. It is also a transport, it is also a character, and it also is a psyker as well, that can uh, cast two spells, I believe. 
yeah, manifest two spells, no smite and two powers from the beast herd discipline. And it's a heavy choice. It is just so, so good. It's not too expensive points wise either. I see, honestly, I could see people taking three of these as their heavy, heavy slots in most armies. It's just bananas good. It's got the, uh, the Whir Tower gun. Assault 1, Strength 9, AP minus 3, D6. If you've managed to manifest a Psychic Power, it changes to Assault D3. And it automatically hits. That is just crazy good. You just throw out a Smite, and that's getting D3. Also hitting Strength 9, AP minus 3, D6 damage shots. Yeah, and it's got a load of guns, and it's a Psychic, and it's got the character keyword. So yeah, it is so, so good. You can take it without the Psyker on top, but honestly, I don't know why you do that. It increases the transport capacity a little bit, but you're, you're missing out so much not taking that guy on the top of it. Um, Looks-wise, I, I quite like the look of the Hunter Rig, but rules-wise, the Kill Rig just outclasses it in every way. Uh, yeah, I am fully in love with that. See a shifts as well. Um, the Morkin Ork and Gorkin Mort are now Lord of War choices. The Stomp has had a bit of a points cut. Make Boy Workshop's a weird one. In that, in Age of Sigmar, if it was a free scenery piece, it'd be really worth taking, it'd be really fun to do. However, the fact that you're paying, I think, 75 points for it, um, it can upgrade your vehicles, which is cool. You basically park a vehicle next to it, you can give it one of the upgrades that we saw earlier, it gets the upgrade for free, but on a one at the end of every turn, the upgrade falls off it. That'd be ace if it was a free kind of like scenery piece and you could, rather than having to purchase the upgrade, you could try and do it mid-battle with a chance of it falling off. The fact that you want to pay points for it just makes it a bit of a, um, I don't know, I'm not super keen. The other scenery piece is the new Big Ed Boss Bunker, which is essentially the head of a Mega Gargan. And as such, it has got a big death ray that it shoots out of its eye. It's also got a transport capacity, so you can stick uh, some, uh, some units in there as well. That seems pretty fun. Again, it's competing for points for other stuff. I really like the look of it, and to be honest, I'll probably just use it as a generic kind of terrain piece on the table. But yeah, that's a quick look at the codex. Like I say, over on the website, we will um, have a full review of this once we've digested it properly. I have to say, I really, really like this box. Can't wait to build up all the miniatures and uh, get some paint on them and add to my growing orc collection. So yeah, stay tuned to the website. As we've spent more time with it, we'll go into a bit more depth with Crusade and all the unit stats and everything. We just want to try and get this video up with a look at the contents uh, while it was fresh out of the box. So yeah, until next time, we'll see you later and we hope you have a good weekend.